and welcome to the book explosion book of the month discussion for Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This month we are working with Harlequin Teen and this live show will be spoilery. We're gonna talk about the book without spoilers for a couple minutes and then get into spoilers and discussion. If you have any questions we are using the hashtag Fox Explosion on Twitter and we're also gonna try to keep an eye on the chat here so you can try to ask in the chat but it moves fast sometimes so Twitter is a better bet for us to catch your question um, but yeah I am Kat this is my channel oh I'm Christine I'm from Pulling Bananas Books and I'm Jesse from Jesse the Reader and we're Book Explosion and let's jump right into our discussion so um, Jesse do you want to kick us off with some general thoughts about this book without spoilers do we want sure. to do you oh. want to do what? Do you want to do like a little brief synopsis or no? Sure. Do you want you take it away? <laughs> okay. So Shadow of the Fox takes place in a world um where there's this dragon that comes every thousand years and grants a wish. And to make it grant you a wish, you need to have this full prayer that you have to say for him to come up and grant it to you. And the prayer is divided into three scrolls. So like it's very hard to know the whole prayer and the last time someone made a wish, it was really bad. So the world's kind of chaotic and not the best. And a thousand years is coming. And now everyone wants the scrolls. And it's a race to see who can get to it first. And it takes place in like, um, it's like a fantasy world of Japanese mythology. And it's really fascinating because I've heard all these words before, but I didn't know what any of them really meant until I read Shadow of the Box. Mm -hmm. Is that a good synopsis? <laughs> I mean, that's like a synopsis for what I feel like our general trilogy is going to be. Yeah. Um, because like in this first book, we're really meeting two major players. Uh, one is a girl who is a kitsune, which is like a supernatural fox creature, or she's half kitsune. And the other is this like broody demon slayer who wields like this demon possessed sword and um, she's kind of charged with protecting the scroll and he has been charged with finding it to deliver it to like his leaders um, and they end up teaming up he doesn't know that she has a piece of the scroll and they're just trying to like make their way through historical fantasy Japan and they encounter all these like, like foes and obstacles along the way of like getting to it, this new temple where they need to go and yeah it's just it's a fun adventure story with Japanese mythology influences and yeah first book in a trilogy I want to say trilogy <laughs> All right, Jesse, tell us about your feels. Now I will tell you about my feels. <laughs> so I actually really ended up enjoying this book and I was pretty surprised by that for some reason. Um, I will say it like at the beginning, it was kind of challenging at first because there's like so many unfamiliar terms, the character names I'm gonna be butchering throughout this whole live show. Um, but I ended up really enjoying it. I liked how it was kind of more so focused on like establishing the characters and like, kind of developing the characters and like setting up like the groundwork for what's to come later on in the trilog trilogy. I really liked that. Um, I kind of enjoyed how slow moving it was. I will say that the plot was, it felt kind of random to me at times, but I still like overall really enjoyed it, so. Yeah, I feel like um, a lot of Shadow of the Fox was building the world. Um, and getting us used to all these different terms and all these different parts of the world. And I really enjoyed how real everything was like ghosts are real and everyone's aware of it like uh you know kids and a are real everyone's aware it's not like a shock that they exist um and i i just really enjoyed learning more about the japanese mythology like uh even just the samurai and their honor and how it works when they lose their honor because we have a character um whose name i'm going to butcher and are already forgotten because the names are so different that like they fall out of my brain. <laughs> Okame. Okame, yeah. And you, you learn a lot just from like watching them interact with like each other and then watching them interact with everyone else and how everyone just calls um, Yumeko like a peasant girl and like how can you boss around that samurai? And I, I love how uh, she is so similar to um, Tatsumi. And like they don't realize how similar they are because he like 
they think he's a samurai, but really he like deals in trickery and like, uh, and she is a kitsune, but they think she's this peasant girl and really like her power is trickery as well. Um, and it really focused on like them kind of just their relationship. And I liked that. It, it like Jesse said, it's like a lot of, I feel like it's a big setup for what's to come. Um, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really agree with that, especially about the world. Like, it felt so rich. Like, there were so many little details. Like, um, we see that one woman who has, like, stolen those two familiars that, like, normally come in threes. And just, like, little details like that are all sprinkled in, um, like, the, the animals of the forest and, like, the kind of, like, demon-possessed bear that they had to, like, face off against. Like, there's just so much going on in this world. It felt like we were taking like a road trip almost because of the way they're traveling and like coming across all these different obstacles. Um, and yeah, I also really loved the dynamic between the two main characters because like it's not really a romance. Like there's a little brewing of like maybe they are kind of attracted to each other, but you know, th this nothing really happens in this first installment. Um, and so I just, I really like their dynamic because they are so different, but also like very similar in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I, I loved that they're both keeping like huge secrets from each other. Like that was just some delicious tension throughout like all the fun adventure stuff. Um, and yeah, especially with the ending, I am very, very excited to see where this trilogy is gonna go. Like I need the second book. Yeah. Um, and I think with that, we're probably going to jump into spoilers now. So if you have not yet read Shadow of the Fox, you should go read it. And then you can come back and you can watch our spoilery discussion. Because there's a lot to talk about this book that we're going to get into. <laughs> it really is. This is a road trip book, like you said. Like, that's how I would describe it. It's not like your typical road trip book, but it is a road trip book. It kind of reminded me in some ways of like the first book in a Rick Riordan series. Oh, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, like you're learning all this stuff. It's not as humorous, like, <laughs> you know, it's not as lighthearted, but it is very much that same sort of feeling where you're like coming into this new world with all this mythology that you kind of heard of and you don't know. And all the like kind of whimsical encounters yeah. that you get in a Rick Riordan book where you're like learning the mythology. Yes. It did have that really similar format to this, but it, yeah, it wasn't as like jokey as a Rick Riordan book. Yeah. Um, it, like it is still, I don't know, I still thought it was really funny at parts. Mm -hmm. Like there were some good points. Like really made me laugh out loud. Um, but yeah, I just, it, to me, it felt like I was binge watching a really good anime. And like, I just want more. It was, it was just so much fun. I really like our characters. And I like that we've kind of gathered a little bit of a group. Like we have a bit of a squad now. And, and the ending again, I just, huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I also, I just, I really love Yumeko. I feel like she's such a fun character. And I mean, for this, all the reasons that, you know, she starts to grow on Tatsumi, that's his name, right? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> like, she just always is the best in people and she's always like, let's do it. And she's so kind hearted. Like she always wanted to like help people along the way. Help and, like, animals. Like, yeah. I I loved that balance with like her sweetness and kind heartedness, but also her kind of like tricksy prankster nature. Like she still had that kind of like fun aspect to her, um, like pulling pranks on the um, monks in the beginning and stuff like that. Like I, I like that she didn't take things too seriously and that she was so like kind hearted. Honestly, I feel like. Um, I like forgot halfway through that the monks were all like worried about her soul being like all trickery. I was like, she's like the nicest person I've ever met. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Her tricks are like, oh, I turned uh, like something into a teapot. Like as far as pranks go, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, like you're fine. <laughs> Ugh. Who was your guys' favorite character? Oh. Uh, I don't, I really like both of our leads. Um, like, because I, I really like their dynamic together. I like that we have like the the cute, like sweet, kind of innocent girl, and then like the broody murder boy. Like, I, I dug it. 
I think Tetsume was, is that how you say his name? Tetsume? Tetsume, I think, yeah, Tetsume. I think he was my favorite character. I really liked how, like, he, like, had this inner battle with himself. Mm -hmm. um, he's, like, you know, constantly, like, wanting to murder all these people that are around him, basically. And I liked that he, like, grew to, like, really care for Yumko and just, like, wanted to watch after her and stuff. Yeah. That guy? His demon thing kept reminding me of something from Cat. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? Um, there is a, I have a similar plot point in one of my books. It's, uh, uh, it's different. It's different. Um, it's different. It's different. It's different. But like that's what it reminded me of. Um, um, but yeah, I love how he's kind of like a robot. Like, <laughs> and then he's like. What is this feeling I feel? Like, oh, it's jealous. He doesn't even know, like, to name it as jealousy or, like, name it as, like, a crush or, like, caring. Like, he's just like, I feel this weird twinge. Like, like, <laughs> like that's emotion. That so interesting. Like, that sort of relationship with him and, like, the demon sword and how he had to constantly block his emotions and, like, constantly be on guard. Like, that was a really interesting, like, dynamic there. Oh, this is a good question. Um, what do you think, this is from Sierra, what do you think happened to cause Okame to go from being a samurai to a ronin? And I feel like this is something maybe we'll learn about as we go on. Yeah. That maybe he had like a really shitty samurai experience where the samurai abused their power. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't really think about that. But like he obviously is on the dishonorable side of things. Like he, he's okay with like breaking some laws and doing some bad things, but he still kind of came through at the end. Like he's a very interesting character. It's like, I don't completely trust him. And he has his own code and I, I, and he follows his code, even though it's not maybe necessarily the most honorable, like he's not gonna like hurt a young girl. I feel like when he threatened to hurt her, he was like, testing Tatsumi. Like, he wasn't actually going to do it. Yeah. I mean, he didn't go through with it when, like, him and his, like, first gang kind of, like, cornered them in the woods and, um, like, he ended up joining their team. Because he was like, oh, we didn't, uh, like, we didn't agree to do this. Like, we were just going to rob them. Like... Yeah. By the way, how old is Yumko? Yumeko is 17. 17? Mm -hmm. Okay. She read, like, really younger to me for some reason. Because she's never left the monk is like she doesn't really live a very sheltered life yeah, yeah that's, okay yeah i'm like because she whenever she didn't recognize the sarcasm i was like you might go stop <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh um but yeah honestly i feel i was thinking about um what happened to okame and i thought maybe we would see it or he would tell us about it but it, it, the way he alludes to the samurai I feel like he was in a situation where he very much didn't approve morally of what the samurai were doing. Maybe he fought against them and then he like lost his honor because he turned against them or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Like he was standing up for something that he believed was right, mm -hmm. but like the the samurais were like against him. And so now he's he like firmly lives by his own moral code. And mm -hmm. also he hates samurais because yeah. of that like moment that pushed him away from being a samurai, because he was at one point. Um, and to see him like turn so far to the other side. But I don't know, this this book plays around a lot with like honor and dishonor. Like who are the honorable ones in each situation? Because like people view uh, Yumeko as like dishonorable and evil just because she's half Kitsune. Mm -hmm. um, and like people view um, Tatsune, Tats Tatsu Tatsu yeah. Tatsune, yeah. Um, as honorable because he's a samurai, but he's like a dark samurai. Uh, like, I don't know, very interesting yeah. dynamic. And it's like his whole identity is a misdirection because he dresses and looks like a samurai and he's trained like a samurai, but he's not. He's got like yeah. a demon attached to him and yeah. he can very easily go rogue. Like, um, yeah, it, I, I like what you're saying because that's exactly kind of what she was trying to do. The whole book was like a misdirect with the characters. Um, I kind of misdirect with the plot because yeah. let's talk about the ending. Like yeah. that was not something I expected at all. Like I figured that we were gonna struggle with like the demon dynamic and 
whatnot um, throughout the book or throughout the series, but I didn't realize that like we were gonna lose him to the demon and he was gonna like take off as the demon. Um, that was intense. I was waiting for that to happen. I was like, she's gonna have to bring him back because she loves him and he loves her and like that's how they're like the emotion's gonna bring him back and it turns out that the emotion's not a weakness. Emotion's your strongest accent. Like love trumps all is what it's gonna, <laughs> it's the Dumbledore motto. <laughs> um so like love is stronger than nothing um because i think eventually he would have been taken over even without yumeko they're like oh his emotional wall was so strong but like he was giving into it and he was having a hard time coming back to it before we seen that first battle that he's like oh shit i shouldn't have done that but like i had to i was gonna die when he was fighting that spider thing mm -hmm. um so i think it was inevitable because this is like the strongest demon ever, you know, like the Omi inside of him. Um, and I think that as a team, the two of them will be able to overpower the thing. I The whole misdirect with the plot for me is that I thought we were like gonna be looking for these three scrolls. And all they're talking about is this one scroll the whole time. Like, where the hell's the other one? <laughs> like, we know there's three and you're just like focused on this one. Like, have you thought about the fact that there's another? <laughs> Is it gonna take all three books to get to all the scrolls, you think? I wonder because we when we have one scroll in this one, like it probably will. Well also I, I might be a little bit foggy on this, the details. What do we know about the other two scrolls? Because we know like um, Lady Satomi is like trying to collect them. Like, does she already have one or both? She has, like, she has one. Has one. Okay. The other ones at that place we keep trying to find out how to get to the feather temple or something. Right. Um and and she um cuts you make you make go has one um, <laughs> okay also so there's this scene where you mecca you mecca drops the scroll and like and Yatsumi's right there and he doesn't see it and i'm like i'm so convinced that he did see it and it like secretly knows but he doesn't and it's just like there's no consequences from that moment and i was just so confused even when they like first meet i'm just like was he not suspicious of her having the scroll because she was like so adamant i'm adamant about him like getting out of there like let's yeah. go like, with the scroll yeah. somewhere else and like how can you not pick up on the fact that like she has it? You know, I think in a way he too, he too is very naive to like social situations because mm -hmm. he's so blocked off emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, Been so like solo his whole whole life, like yeah. off everyone. And in a way, he's like so convinced of his superiority. I don't think he ever thought that she could he never question this random peasant girl would yeah. have the scroll. Yeah. Like I didn't I didn't question that as much either because like when they first meet in the forest and they're trying to escape and she's like, let's go, let's go. Like the temple is on fire and covered in <laughs> I can I can understand her urgency and like just wanting to move along. <laughs> uh, but yeah I that moment when she dropped it and they're like I was so tense in that moment because I was like something's gonna come of this. Like yeah. someone's gonna see it. Someone's gonna confront her about it later. Um, like, I really want to know what her, her master plan is to like, if, if they make it to the temple and then all of a sudden she pulls out the scroll, like, what does she think is going to happen? I know. I know. I like, how is she going to get around this Tatsumi yeah, thing? Yeah. Wow. And then it's kind of solved in the end because now Tatsumi is like evil and like <laughs> causing rampage along the countryside. Like, what did you guys think of this prince who's like just guards this bridge waiting for people to pass like a troll to challenge them so that he can be perfection like i feel like we we're really like inserting a myth into the story there like it felt very fairy tale esque no. yeah i was gonna say that feels i feel like i've seen that plot point in an anime before yeah. i like, think we're setting up for a love triangle there and I mean, we did see the prince um in the very beginning in that opening chapter with the the maid girl um oh, then gets like immediately murdered by lady satomi um, yeah. so like i was waiting the whole time for like him to come more into play yeah yeah so i was happy when he showed up and i was like okay now we finally have like that sort of mystery aspect resolved but there's another guy that, who's that guy with like the, the silver-haired guy, the stranger? Yeah. Who's like magical? He's some kind of 
paranormal, supernatural something, right? Like, yeah. I don't, he had a very Magnus Bane feel to him when we like saw him. Like, <laughs> he like popped in and was like very powerful, took control of the situation and was just like the puppet master in that moment. Um, so like, who is he? What is his deal? Maybe he's a full Kitsune. Ooh, that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was just disguised as the ghost. But if, if you're full kids today, you would be able to see the ears and stuff, right? Ooh. Or um, remember that magic guy? They were talking about those magic guys. Um, the magic guy that was checking up on Tatsumi. He's like a magical member of the Black Shadow Clan. Maybe he's one of those. Because mm. he, was, he was a character that like, as we went on, like, I don't know, after we had that conversation about how he was talking about how it's such a shame they, like, picked Tatsumi, and he's like, you're such a handsome dude. He, like, had this, like, he had, like, more personality to him than I was expecting him to have. And I feel like because we got that conversation, he's going to come back into it. Yeah, I, I think he's definitely going to be back. Um, yeah, he was, he, then all of a sudden I was like, are you Magnus Bane? <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah that was really interesting and also so like are they i mean it's her master like satan <laughs> like <laughs> oh i don't know i like i don't know what exactly the mythology is it like a dead emperor that was evil yeah i don't know <laughs> i feel like there's so much like depth and lore and like mythology to the world that we haven't seen enough of yet to like yeah. piece together real theories about this. <laughs> um, what did you what did you guys feel about Daikone? Is his name Daikone the the cousin Daikone of the king? God is um um Daisuke. Daisuke. Oh, it was close. Yeah, that's that's the um prince who guards the bridge. Yeah, I really like that he's coming with them now. Like I liked how he turned around and was like, I, I'll make sure you don't die so we can have that duel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like I feel like he's gonna realize that like, okay, I've had like the duels of my life now. I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> he's gonna help them save the world and yeah. that's gonna like calm him down. He's gonna be like, okay, I'm good. I don't need to fight anymore. <laughs> no, I remember. <laughs> Bridges like a troll. Like I, I proved myself okay. <laughs> like, I'm a member of the Avengers now. Like it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I like I just I liked how we gathered up our a squad. Like yeah. I, I like all of our our characters. That well, I mean, we kind of had a squad and then it fell apart at the end because one of our members went evil. But we're gonna we're gonna save him. It's gonna be great. <laughs> um. <laughs> What was your guys' favorite like obstacle battle encounter that we faced along our journey? Um, I think mine. Jesse, do you have one? Well, I have like two because I, I really liked the ending because mm -hmm. like that was like a lot of fun to like follow the action scenes and stuff with that. But I also really liked, even though it was super random, the village. The ducky. Yeah. The ghost village. Yeah. And for some reason, that was like really interesting reading that. It was that really was, random, but I liked it. <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. My favorite was definitely when like um, Yumeko uh, had to just like, like Tatsumi was occupied and they were trying to find the priest and she had to just like go full kutsune and mm -hmm. like she turned into that demon and then it tried to attack her, but there was like two demons that looked the same and like, and she was like, well, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I loved her fox magic. Like at the end when she was trying to like prove herself as like an oracle. Oh, and yeah. she like did like the prediction of the rabbit in the garden and like made the gardeners like freak out and like trying to save all the vegetables. Like I just I really liked her her mat the illusion magic. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think my favorite encounter uh Oh, I don't know. I did like the the ghost town, the haunted town as well, because that was like an interesting mystery. It was like, what's going on? Like, why are, why are they all giving them food and like sending them off to this area? Like, yeah. I liked how they solved that. I don't know. I just really enjoyed how they would like get these encounters and like solve them and like move along. Yeah, like, there was like, a little randomness to it, but again, it was that like Percy Jackson sort of like fun adventure of hitting these pit stops along the way. Honestly, it was like a Percy Jackson, it was Percy Jackson format. Um, but um, I also really liked the one where 
they were fighting the bear. And like, she realized the thing about the weasels um, mm -hmm. and got them on her side and then used them against the wind witch. I was like, oh, that was badass. <laughs> like, that was very cool. Yeah, I liked her strategizing, like, especially for someone who lived a very sheltered and naive kind of life. Like, she has, like, a, an inner strategizing that I approve of. Yeah, it's like her innate um, and cleverness, I feel like, as a yeah. kid. Because even, and I love also how she's always thinking, because she, like, her father figure was, like, that head priest, like, that monk. And, like, she's always kind of going back to the... Like the, oh my God, what's it called? Not rules, but like the things that he taught. I ideals? Yeah, yeah, like the morals that he yeah. really ingrained in her as a child. Um, and she really believes in him and really looks up to him. And I think that's so sweet. Do we know anything about her family? Like, we do. We know that her, uh, Oh, I forgot, but it's right in the beginning. I remember listening to it. I, I, I read this book um, about a month ago, so I'm a little bit foggy on some details. It's like, um, but I wonder if her family is going to come to play later. Yeah, so her mom wrote the letter. So her mom left a letter with her, with the monks, and it said, like, she is very important to fulfilling this prophecy, basically, with the dragon. Like, she'll be a very integral part of, like, saving the world, basically. I remember that now. Yeah. So, do we think her mom was the Kitsune? What if her mom was one of those things, the oracles that she pretended to be, oh. and then her dad was a Kitsune? Mm. Why? The, the, the guy, the guy you see, the stranger. <laughs> I like it. I'm into that. <laughs> we have a theory. <laughs> her padre is a cool Kitsune. Here's an interesting question. Um, do you think the dragon will actually be what people think it is? Like maybe the wishing thing is a cover for something darker. And like, what do you think was the bad wish that was wished years ago? I have a theory about that. Okay. That like maybe that bad wish from a thousand years ago was that like all the myths were true and um, that that's why we have all this magic stuff in the world. And that's why everything is chaos because all this blood magic exists and stuff. That's interesting, but is that such a bad thing? I like the magic. <laughs> the, the blood magic is very dangerous. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, I feel like with all the good came all the bad. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Yeah. Like, the world doesn't seem... Like, when the, the synopsis says, like, you know, a thousand years ago, um, the land was plunged into an age of darkness and chaos. And, like... It doesn't see, it wasn't as dark and chaotic as I thought it was going to be based on that wish. Like, I was expecting, like, a, an apocalyptic dystopian type thing where, like, everyone is oppressed and everyone is miserable. And it was more of a fun fantasy world than that. Yeah. Um, like it almost reminded me a little of, like, Sarah J. Mass fey worlds, like, where there's just, like, lots of fey magic within the world. And that's just, like, a part of it. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I wonder what the specific wish, wish was. Yeah. I'm sure we'll know by the end. Yeah. And like, is it, is it a real dragon? Like how accurate is the myth of the dragon? Like what if they gather these scrolls and they say the, pra the prayer of a thousand wishes and like something different happens? I don't know. The whole thing sounds very reminiscent to me of uh, the angel of Raziel and like how you have to gather the three different moral instruments and then you get a wish um, from the angel. And like, I think in a way like the dragon is their God. Like, yeah. if, because he said he was so, through that thousand prayers, like he was praying to God to help him with whatever. Um, originally, like he's the Jonathan Shadow Hunter of, <laughs> of this world. <laughs> he's got to bring it back to Shadow Hunters. <laughs> I'm brushing up on my lore because we're coming up on a Shadow Hunter release. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how did you guys feel about the slow burn romance happening in the series? Like, how do you feel about our romance slash relationship? I'm enjoying it. I kind of wish there was a kiss before the end of this book. Like, there was a hand holding, and then I was like, at the end, you can bring him back from the darkness with a kiss. 
I kissed the Omi. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I I like it as well. I I could have had it be a little less slow burn, like a little more hot burn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like let's warm things up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I, I actually really appreciated that it was more about them like warming up to each other as like friends and just getting along as people before it like delved into something romantic. Um, like I, I just I liked that they, it, there this, there wasn't a lot of romance in this book. Like if you don't like romance, this is a great book to read because it's pretty light on the romance. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like they needed a slow burn being that they, they don't, they're never around other humans, like social people, like their age and their, in their, you know, that they would even have these kind of feelings for. Yeah. So, like, they have to adapt to being around one another first because they're never socializing. <laughs> like, and also, like, especially Yumeko, like, she's only been around, like, old monk monks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> She doesn't have much experience. Yeah, in all <laughs> humanity. Like, yeah. So, like, the the slow burn aspect definitely made sense and, like, worked. If, if they had, like, fallen for each other, that would have felt, like, very insta-lovey and I, 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 it would have been, like, too fast. Like, I think it's very nicely paced for these characters and the story and their situation. Yeah. I'm okay with them like ending up together at some point throughout the trilogy, yeah. but I just got major like brother sister vibes in this book, and I didn't like I couldn't make the connection of them being together romantically. Like I know we had like a few little romantic scenes, but I was just kind of like I don't know. It just felt like he was like a pre protective older brother kind of thing. So I don't know. <laughs> I didn't feel that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for some reason like the audiobook narrator made the Yumeko sound so young to me. So it just felt like older brother protecting little sister to me. Mm. So, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like um, um, I'm all for the slow burn. I just, I do want them to end up together. I'm, you know, I'm all for the triangle. Like I'm kind of, yeah. I, I'm, I'm good for triangle. a triangle too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think the triangle is going to be with? The prince? I think Daikin, the prince. Yeah, I think like they just focus too much on how handsome he is, and then he has that moment where he's like, "Ooh, you look good," and then Hatsumi's like, "Excuse me, <laughs> why are you saying that? Why do I feel weird about it?" <laughs> I mean, also, um, like seeing him in the beginning, like he's actually nice. So, like, mm -hmm. I like that he's nice because there are so many people in this world who really aren't. Um, yeah. And like, he was even nice to. Oh, I forgot the. Um, peasant girl's name, Suki, the new maid in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Um, like, he was even nice to her, this random new, like, peasant girl. Yeah. His, like, stepmom, or, like, his his uncle, his dad's, like, favorite concubine or whatever is just, like, murdering all her maids, just, like, burning through them. He's like a real turner. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, Jesse, we, we, had a, we have a tweet that said that um, Olivia agrees with the brother-sister thing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not alone. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you think Yumeko is going to save Tatsumi? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. How do you think? How do you think? Oh, how do you think? Um, the power of love. The power. Yeah, I honestly think it's going to be, like, the emotion. <laughs> Wait. What if her wish is that? Uh, oh, like, <laughs> like what if she collects the scrolls and her wish is to save him or something? What a waste of a wish! <laughs> <laughs> like, think of the greater good. <laughs> save him the old-fashioned way. <laughs> she can get <laughs> with love. And she only gets a wish every one thousand years from this dragon. If <laughs> she was <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I kind of hope it does. Oh man. Uh, like, even if it, it, it does go the brother sister way, Jesse, I think he's gonna say she'll also save him with love because he genuinely cares about her and he's never genuinely cared about anybody before. No, like I know what's gonna end up in them being together. Like I know it's not like a uh, brother and sister. Well, no, I'm just saying like even. I, I don't know. They could. Yeah, they could. Yeah. She could end up falling for Daikin and na 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 Daikin, 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 Daikin. I think it's just Dai. It's 
Daisuke. Daisuke. And they, they could have more of a romantic relationship. And maybe he does end up as a brother figure. But I think still he cares about her enough that it would bring him back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we definitely haven't gone like far enough in a romance direction with them for them to like be for sure end game. Like, yeah. um, I, I don't think any of us have ever read a Julie Cagle book before. So like, I don't know how twisty she gets with like relationship misdirects and love triangles and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I could, I could see this going in a different direction by the end of the trilogy. Cause this first book ended in a really different spot than I thought it was going to. Right. Yeah. I just like thought we were gonna have the scrolls. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is not. We're just getting that priest. <laughs> um, let's see. Do we have any questions? Here's about theories for the next book. For for book two, because I, I feel like we're not gonna get our dragon until book three. So. Yeah. What do we think book two is going to be about? Like just saving Tatsumi, Tatsumi? Um, and maybe finding more about her parents um, mm. and her past. Yeah. And um, yeah, and it's going to be like probably a lot of little adventures on the way to saving Tatsumi. Yeah. And, and more mythology because now um, after using all her Kitsune magic, like her ears and tail are just straight up showing. So like now the squad knows she's a Kitsune. Like, that's going to change the dynamic for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, hopefully not too much. There'll be, like, an adjustment period. I think um, Okame, the, the Ronin, I think he's going to be fine with it because, like, he's already, like, living by his own code and he, like, likes Yumeko. So he'd just be like, okay, you're a Katsune. Cool. Um, I wonder how the – I think the prince might have a different reaction. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. He's kind of open-minded, it seems like. Um, yeah. But he also believes that she's an oracle, like, mm. which is a very prestigious position. And it turns out she's a peasant kitsune. Um, so, like, that's, like, I don't think he would hold it against her aside from, like, the deception element. Like, I think he might feel deceived mm. and that he won't be happy about that. I think um, Tatsume, when he, like, he obviously knows now, but I think it's going to take him a while to realize, like, they're very alike. And, like, I think he's going to be like, how dare she? And then it, something's going to have to make him. It's going to be a while. To he's going to be like, how dare she? While the demon controls his body. Like, yeah, how, like, he's going to have a lot of time to sift through it. <laughs> while he's not in control. He's going to be able to work through it just fine because, like, Dude, you're all you also were lying about who you really are, and now you're straight up possessed by a demon. So like <laughs> you better be happy that the half Katsune cares about you enough to try to save you. Because yeah. like I feel like his gut reaction his gut reaction is gonna be like, How dare she have lied to me and now I'm here because of her? Like <laughs> and then he's gonna have to go through a whole like arc of like being stuck in the brain and being like, Oh, <laughs> she brought me back. <laughs> I like the cover for the second book. I haven't seen it. <laughs> what? Oh, Jesse's highlighting it. Wait, where is it? The soul of the so or soul of the sword. I do like that. Ooh, let me see. Ooh, yeah, that's cool. It's pretty. Pretty full. Pretty I, like full. I like the colors. Yeah. And so yeah, with a title like The Soul of the Sword, we're definitely dealing with like our demon possessed boy now. <laughs> What's his name like Kaikmo? Kakamako? Um, Kagi Goroshi. Kami Kami Goroshi. God Slayer. God God Slayer. Or or no, the demon is Yagurama. No, yeah, no. <laughs> Yagurama is the big bad demon that um Satomi, the one that they're like fighting at the end that Lady Satomi called. I just have like a list of names and notes and stuff to try to keep track of things. Um, okay, do we have any more questions? Let me see. I feel like we discussed a lot of things. Yeah. yeah I feel like we covered most of the things. Um, shall we talk about our December book of the month? We shall. Let's see. December, 
we will be reading. I'm trying to get it. Here we go. Hi, Word. Hi. Brandon Sanderson. Jesse, you're currently reading this, right? I saw yeah, this is so good so far. <laughs> Give us a little bit about it. Wait, but not too much. But not too much. It's really good. <laughs> I think that's all we need. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a futuristic sci-fi adventure story about a girl who wants to be a pilot, um, but she's not exactly welcome in the pilot academy because of her family legacy. But then she discovers like the wreckage of a ship that may be her hope in getting into the academy and also maybe saving their world that is under constant attack. So. There's a, there's a brief little. I, I did a better synopsis in my yeah video I did earlier. I, I was gonna say book haul, but I haven't told this yet. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll give you better synopsises in our. Yeah, there's a good. I did one in my haul too. That was like what Kat said, except a little bit more elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> um, our live show is going to be on Friday, December twenty first. It is the Friday before Christmas. Um, it's going to be on Christine's channel, and it's going to be our big end of the year live show, which is always one of our most fun live shows because we kind of reflect on all the books that we've read and choose like our favorites of the year and just talk about like uh, uh, how it was another year of book explosion. We're closing out year five. Yeah, right? we're closing out. Is that what we're doing? 2016, 2017, 2018. We're closing out year five. Whoa. <laughs> We're going into year six. It'll be we're like, six. Yeah, we're, we're, we're starting. But um, yeah, it, it's our closing at year five. We always do our like Oscars of the book explosion yeah. book of the year. So it's, yeah. that, so that'll be a nice fun show. And again, it's on a Friday, not a Saturday like we usually do. Um, just because Christmas holiday season schedules get a little bit mixed up. Yeah, um, yeah we hope you guys can join us for Skyward in December. And we hope you had a great time reading Shadow of the Fox with us in November. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's gonna be it for our live show today. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'll link, our channels are like linked down below and stuff so you can follow us and follow our Booksplosion Twitter and Instagram, which we're, we're trying to revitalize <laughs> um, and to just to stay up to date on things. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for coming to our live show and watching and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.